Now I'm joined by Cameron Nickbin. He is Professor of Structural Integrity at Imperial College London. He joins me now. Thank you very much indeed for coming in to see us today. Now, you're working in the Centre for Nuclear Engineering and what we've seen already with these explosions that have taken place, is there any danger from the explosions that we've already seen? It's, um, the, the present explosions are on the outer area of the central core, so mm -hmm. the core hasn't been breached. The dangers are minimal at the moment. Mm -hmm. It is unlikely that we will see something like Ch Chernobyl. It is now three days since the start of this action, and I think the workers who have been working a 24-hour shift to try and get this uh, working um, have been able to contain the possible danger of a full explosion. So I think at the moment there is not a is too it, much to worry about. Is it safe to say that the longer this goes on, the less likely it is that we are going to see a catastrophic explosion? Yes, certainly. The first 24 hours are crucial. Beyond that, uh, they would have been able to pump water in there, pump, pump chemicals to cool down the uh, reactors which were already shut down. So it's unlikely that uh, unless uh, water is cut off for some reason or water doesn't have contact with the core, uh, that you will see something major. And now because of the seawater, I don't see a problem at all. Anymore. Now, when we look at why this happened and the reasons for it, uh, how much of this has to do with the fact that it is built in an area that's prone to earthquakes and the tsunami struck yeah. the plant? Um, remember, this is a 40-year-old reactor. Mm -hmm. The design levels at that, point, at that stage would have taken into account the possibility of an earthquake. They would not have considered an earthquake of 8.9 scale. It's quite a massive uh, earthquake, which has only happened six times in the last century. So. Just looking at that and seeing the containment hasn't failed, the main containment has not failed. They've done a fairly good job to that extent. Mm -hmm. The peripherals of the cooling units and other sections have been destroyed and uh, the, that possibly could have been improved because new, new, new builds and new designs would have taken these in, into account for large earthquakes. Uh, following 2007 Niagata uh, earthquake, there was a reassessment in Japan of all the nuclear sites, so they would have uh, improved safety. But I think this is a learning curve, and now they would have had a better chance for the future. Now, it seems that, uh, people, uh, that countries that are, are not in earthquake zones are also reassessing all their nuclear needs. Do yeah. you think that this is, uh, this is an overreaction to what we've seen? Well, they have Japan? to show overreaction because the media and the public are always wary of this. This has been happening for the last 30 years. Uh, recently, people have decided that the direction towards energy uh, development is back to nuclear. Not just people, committees, governments, and now obviously this, they have to be very careful of what people, what government says at, say at the moment. So they're very careful about their statements at the moment. But I don't think long term it's going to affect policy. Okay, Professor Nickman, thank you very much indeed for uh, sharing your knowledge with us today.